Did your people ever kill innocent civilians? It's entirely possible. That's Eric Prince, Betsy DeVos's little brother, reportedly a former informal Trump advisor and a multimillionaire advocate of war for profit. Which might be profiting from the war. Uh, well, we're not there now, but um, any vendor that, again, that solves that solution, that's, that's capitalism, that's, uh, that's what it's about. Prince made an excellent career move, being born in 1969 to an insanely wealthy family in the Dutch-inspired town of Holland, Michigan. Eric's father, Edgar, had a manufacturing business that hit it big with, among other products, a lighted car sun visor, which is good at both blocking the sun and blocking the LGBTQ plus community from progressing. Edgar used his profits to fund far-right organizations, giving millions towards the founding of the Family Research Council, an organization which argues that homosexuality is a type of perversion. It has been classified as an anti-LGBTQ plus hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Edgar and Elsa Prince's hate for entire groups of people was instilled in Eric from a young age. Along with his sister, Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos, Prince attended Holland Christian High School. There he played on the soccer team that won a state championship. His coach, Dan Walcott, remembers him well. He was very, very intense, he said. After high school, Prince attended the U.S. Naval Academy before dropping out after three semesters. He graduated from Hillsdale College in 1992, having majored in economics. While at Hillsdale, Prince interned at the White House under George H.W. Bush. But his tenure there didn't last long. Prince said he saw a lot of things I didn't agree with. Homosexual groups being invited in, the Budget Agreement, the Clean Air Act. He left to intern for California Congressman Dana Rohrenbacher, a guy who voted no on enforcing against anti-gay hate crimes. Swell dude. Prince went on to join the U.S. Navy, where he found the apparent need for private training facilities for special operations. He left in 1996 and inherited some of his father's $1.35 billion fortune. In his book, Civilian Warriors, Prince wrote, my father had created an amazing enterprise. I was blessed to inherit a fortune. Now I had to use it wisely. With his new fortune, Prince, like most of us, would use his money to start a private contracting military service based in North Carolina. Blackwater Lodge and Training Center opened in 1997 and quickly turned into the most notorious and controversial privatized military contracting service of all time. Blackwater reportedly received more than a billion dollars in U.S. government contracts, and Prince became the biggest of the State Department's three private security contractors and seemingly the most reckless. A 2007 investigation by the U.S. State Department found that Blackwater was overbilling the State Department by manipulating its personnel records. It also found that Blackwater guards were partying, drinking, and once even drunkenly crashed a $180,000 armored car. According to one of the investigators, they saw themselves as above the law. Look, we employed thousands of people. And uh, I would never say that uh, the men were perfect. We didn't employ angels, we employed veterans. But maybe Blackwater shouldn't have discriminated against angels because in 2007, the worst happened. You do admit that Blackwater personnel have shot and killed innocent civilians, don't you? Uh, no, sir, I, I disagree with that. In 2007, Blackwater employees opened fire and killed 17 unarmed Iraqi civilians, including a nine-year-old boy. The incident became known as the Nasur Square Massacre. Blackwater claimed its guards were under attack and acted in self-defense. But the first U.S. soldiers to respond to the scene found no evidence of enemy activity, and the report said the shootings by Blackwater were a criminal event. Two Iraqi police officers directing traffic in the square at the time back up the report. <laughs> According to The Intercept, Blackwater whistleblowers alleged that Prince encouraged an environment in which Iraqis were killed for sport. You were operating in a war zone, right? So the military in Iraq and Afghanistan, for example, had very strict rules of engagement. Did you follow them? Uh, sure. In a sworn statement, one former Blackwater employee claimed Prince views himself as a Christian crusader tasked with eliminating Muslims in the Islamic faith from the globe, and that Prince encouraged and rewarded the destruction of Iraqi life. If you don't believe that, 
take Prince's own words. Which is true. I think if you refer to terrorists, you call them whatever you want. But you said these were the chanting barbarians American troops had been sent to liberate. You weren't sent to liberate terrorists. Sounds like you're talking about Iraqis. Sir, uh, look, the, 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 from the, your the, words from your memory. The, 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 in a United States court, three Blackwater contractors were convicted on manslaughter charges. A fourth was found guilty of first degree murder. The Nasur Square massacre was far from the only case where Blackwater contractors, under Prince, acted unjustly. In 2005, it was reported that Blackwater guards fired off 70 rounds into an Iraqi's car. In 2006, witnesses said an Iraqi ambulance driver was killed by uncontrolled arms firing by Blackwater guards. After these atrocities, Blackwater rebranded and changed its name to Z, and then rebranded once more to Academy. But the name change wasn't enough to stop the seemingly consistent attacks on Prince, who sold a rebranded version of Blackwater in 2010. From Blackwater, Prince went on to run Frontier Services Group, a Hong Kong-based security and logistics firm, pushing the Trump administration to privatize the war in Afghanistan, which could be bad depending on how you look at his resume. A few things might help his chances of securing a contract in either Afghanistan or Syria. In 2016, Prince donated $250,000 to Donald Trump's presidential campaign, the National Party, and a pro-Trump super PAC and another $150,000 to a Trump-adjacent super PAC called Make America Number One. Aside from donating loads of money, Prince donated serious time to Trump and the campaign. In November 2017, Prince told Congress that he played no official or really unofficial role in the Trump campaign. But he didn't tell them about a meeting he arranged at the Trump Tower with Don Jr., Stephen Miller, a convicted pedophile, and an Israeli social media savant. Don't you think that's something important to disclose to the House Intelligence Committee while you're under oath? He did. You didn't. We just went through the testimony. There's no mention <laughs> of the Trump Tower meeting in August 2016. Why not? I don't know if they got the transcript wrong. <laughs> it's unclear if Prince has amnesia or if the person whose only job is transcribing testimony somehow left that part out. One meeting Prince did disclose was a meeting which took place in the Seychelles shortly before Trump's inauguration. In addition to Prince, the meeting was attended by former Blackwater consultant turned advisor to the UAE and a Russian investor with reportedly close ties to Vladimir Putin. Reports suggest this meeting was a means to establish a back channel between Putin's ally and Trump's ally who was Eric Prince. Prince said being questioned by Robert Mueller's team on the meeting was worse than the worst thing. Look, anytime you sit down for an interview like that, it, it's so it's, yeah, I think you'd probably rather go to a proctology exam. <laughs> Recently, Prince, who's apparently not a colon health advocate, has been examining ways to fund Trump's border wall. Together with his good friends, Kurt Schilling, Steve Bannon, and David Clark, he's backed an independent attempt, which included a GoFundMe to pay for Trump's wall. It's unclear if Eric Prince and his American friends are the country Mexico, who, according to one source, was gonna pay for the wall. They're gonna pay for the wall, and they're gonna enjoy it, okay? It's not yet clear if Prince's favors to the president are enough to sway him towards privatizing war. But with millions of dollars, Prince definitely has more favors up his sleeve. But the fact is, contractors have been part of American military history. They've been part of world military history from the beginning okay. and will be in the future. Though he's a self-described Christian, Prince's vision of the future clearly isn't informed by the Bible, where in the book of Matthew it says, no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and money. He must be more of an Old Testament, fire, brimstone kind of guy.